Hi everyone, welcome back to AI News. Today we have a very special guest. It's a pastor. And the way I meet this pastor is at a Raul's event. Yeah, and a vision rally. Vision rally. And what he said really touched me. Yeah. And then what he said, I think is so important that every churches in America need to know, especially churches in California. So we have Pastor Wolfgang. Actually, let me correct you. Okay. Because many people call me pastor, but I'm actually a minister. Okay, minister. And so I see there a little bit of a difference in there, but I have been in the ministry for over two decades. I love to pray. I always would like to start with prayer. Is it okay with you if we say a prayer before oh, yeah, we get please. started? Yeah, yeah. Please, please, please. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Father, we thank you. We praise you. We honor you. We love you, Lord Jesus Christ. You are our God. And we love you. We invite you, Holy Spirit, right now to be here with us. Amen. So that what comes out of this is blessing the people that watch it. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Wow. Powerful prayer. And yes. your ministry is actually called Pray California, right? That's right. Yes. Yeah. Please tell us a little bit about what your ministry does and uh, what inspired you to start a ministry like this. Well, I actually didn't start it, but I have been on the board of Pray California since 2004. So, yeah, 19 years now. And Pray California is a ministry that mobilizes prayer all over California. Mm. But just yesterday, I was working on the website of Pray California, which is praycalifornia.org, where we wrote that over the last two decades, we have been establishing relationships, not just in California, but also across the United States, mm. and now recently also to the nations. So there's ministries from across the nations coming into our Zoom prayer calls, which are every Wednesday at noon. And they're praying with us and Pray California is mentoring them. And it has led to, for instance, one pastor in Pakistan now to, to start Pray Pakistan because he saw with Pray California how important it is that we pray together. Wow. And, and we also have a pastor in Kenya and a pastor in India. We support Israel. So we are impacting the nations also. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, a lot of people say that California is a lost cause. And then uh, the root of evil is in California. Yeah. There are a lot of people like moving out yeah. to those good states. Yeah, uh, yes. red states. Mm -hmm. And what's your message on that? And what makes California so special? It's that funny that you're saying that because just two days ago, I saw a Facebook post and somebody said, it's time to get out of California. Yeah. <laughs> get out <laughs> as long as you can. Yeah. You know, so I responded and said, well, some people are called to what other people see as a lost cause. But God calls us here to stand here and to do the work that the Lord has called us to do to transform California. Mm -hmm. And I do believe that California still has a very bright future. I think the harvest will come mightily mm -hmm. and the Lord is preparing California for a great harvest. Yeah, from my knowledge, although California is like the worst state, we, we have to like the gun control and everything, but California have the brightest and then the, the most conservative Christian churches around the whole world, I think. It's like John MacArthur, Jack Hibbs, like mm -hmm. all these amazing pastors that speak out all these messages mm -hmm. and just ask America to repent. Mm -hmm. So what's your message to all the churches? You just mentioned the word repentance. Yes. And repentance is something that is not in the general mainstream churches. Repentance is a word that has been forgotten in many times. So the message of repentance is actually a gift from God to us. And we need to pick up that gift and use it. Repentance is something that should come up in the preaching from the pulpit much more often. You know, repentance leads to holiness and holiness brings about as a consequence later on revival mm -hmm. and the revival will bring in the harvest. Yeah. At the speech, as I remember, you talk about unity. 
unity among the churches. Yeah. I think every church is talking about unity. Everyone wants to talk about unity. But I think there's a lot of misconception about unity and then uh, discerning right and wrong. We see a lot of churches that have transgender pastor, uh, have drag queen pastor, even Methodist church. They're saying that the wound uh, after their transformation is like the nails go through Jesus and the wound actually make them perfect. It's hard for me to think about unity with that kind of teaching. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Like, how can we have unity when all these churches teaching are so blasphemous, I have mm -hmm, to say? Mm -hmm. Well, the good thing is that we have the Word of God. Jesus says to us, He is the way, the truth, and the life. Now, if we really believe that He is the truth and He is the Word, so we need to go to the Word of God and read and believe what is written in there and then act accordingly. If we do that, then the Word is like a plumb line, you know, like a two-edged sword. Yes. So we can discern what is good and what is evil. Because the Word of God is so sharp. It is clear what is good and what is evil. And the Holy Spirit helps us to discern that, what is right and what is wrong. And we do not need to be afraid of a woke culture that is displaying anti-Christian values to us, but we need to stand against that, what is a lie, and we need to declare it and we need to educate the people, our flock, the people that we are responsible for as pastors or as ministers, that uh, we say, this is right, this is wrong. It's very interesting. For instance, in the book of Obadiah, there is, I just want to read one verse. In verse 112 says, Do not gaze or gloat in triumph over your brother's day the day when his misfortune came. Do not rejoice over the sons of Judah in the day of their destruction. Do not speak arrogantly cheering or maliciously mocking in the day of their distress. I often find that even in the church, between different churches, there is a way that they talk about each other that is against the Word of God. And that leads to disunity. But we know also from the Word of God that a body that is divided cannot stand. And that is what the enemy tries to do. He tries to divide us all the time, the body of Christ. So, yes, it is really important that we come into unity and that we come together. It is very important that pastors are actually gathering together in prayer. So we have many pastors and ministry leaders, prayer leaders, that come onto the Pray California call to pray every week. Every week we, we pray for three hours from 12 noon to 3 p.m. on a Wednesday. We invite people to come on. We have other tools that can be used if you don't have time on a Wednesday, you can do your own prayer meeting and we supply you with a Zoom room for free that you can go and gather your congregation or the people that pastors in your region or in your county that are with you that want to start praying. We provide you with a Zoom room. You can start praying and have your own prayer meeting. Mm -hmm. You know, But there is a call to prayer. There is a call to unity. When we pray, we come together in unity. And yeah. then God can pour out his blessing on the unity because that is what he desires. I mean, Jesus says, the Father and I are one, but give me those ones so they and me can be one as the Father and I are one. So that unity is a heart desire of God. Jesus also talked about like, if your arm is failing you, if your arm is sinning, Cut your arms off, your, your eyes is sinning, poke your eyes out. Necessary for all the churches with different ideas, especially uh, the churches with the leftist idea. Read drag queen story hours to our young kids. Is it necessary to have unity with the, that kind of teaching? The unity is regarding those that Christ. are righteous in the eyes of the Lord. So uh, where does our righteousness come from? From Jesus Christ. So if you do not believe in Jesus Christ, 
or the word of God. And you go your own way, you do your own things, and you say homosexuals are good and drag queens are welcome in our church. I do not believe that the Lord is going to say you are welcome in heaven <laughs> because the word tells us the lukewarm, yeah. he vomits out of his mouth. Yes. Yeah. So these people are going to have a very sore understanding and awakening when they find out that when judgment day comes that they were deceived by the devil. And yes. They believed the devil over the word of God. It's the same thing of what happened in the Garden of Eden. Yes. You know? And there was a consequence to it. And the consequence was they had to leave the Garden of Eden. And they are not going to get into the kingdom of God. They are deceived if they believe that because they need to go back to the root, to the word of God and start reading, believing and acting according to it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just read this article this morning. It says that Satanists, how they work is they believe in karma. So, for example, if they, have, if they sell poison apple and then they advertise it as apple, and you ate it and you die, that means they are sinning because they didn't tell the truth that it's a poison apple. What they do is they sell poison apple and advertise it as poison apple. And if you still eat it, that's your fault because you know what it is and you still took it. I think that's just how society and all these uh, evil things work right now. Like drag queen is good homosexuality is good and uh, all these uh, transing the kids is good and then uh, they just advertise it that way and then if you still take it like what California has been doing for the past 20 years that's our fault because we didn't stop it what can the churches do to stop this kind of thing I think we are getting very very close to the last days or we are in the last days. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> because in the last days, the word tells us in the last days, good is being called bad and bad is being called good. And this reversal is what we are seeing right now in the media. The mainstream media is poisoning the masses that believe what is written there. You know, and um, what can we do? Mm -hmm. We can educate, let people know what is right or wrong according to the word of God and then come together in unity and pray. I mean, uh, repentance and humbleness and being on our knees, you know, uh, is something that is not so popular in today's culture, yes. but it is so necessary. But I do believe the Lord is a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. And so if your heart's desire is geared towards God, if you fix your eyes on Jesus, He will reward you and He will show you the way. He will protect you. He will guide you. He will lead you. And things are, are going to happen. But there also needs to be an understanding with the pastors that it's not just the church mountain. And that leads me to the seven mountain mandate. Mm -hmm. The people that believe that the kingdom of God is coming, that kingdom of God is coming for all seven mountains. So the people in arts and entertainment, in the family mountain, in the government mountain, all those mountains are really important. And kingdom-minded people need to rise to the top in these mountains. And I do believe that there is more and more an understanding also that we need to help each other, those kingdom-minded people, to rise up to the top so that we are the ones that are making the decisions and not the evil ones. Yeah. But as we're talking about the government mountain, a lot of people that are during the voting season, there are a lot of Christians that are still voting for leftist agenda. They're still voting for Democrats. A lot of them, they're supporting abortion. They call it as women's rights. Those people think 
that's a political issue, but actually that's a biblical issue. So what, what, what do you think about this? Jesus says he is the life. Yeah. We need to stand for life. We need to be pro-life and against abortion. And uh, I believe that anybody who votes for somebody who is promoting abortion mm -hmm. is actually uh, participating in that national sin. And it is really something that this country uh, is responsible for and the blood of over 60 million babies uh, since 1970 something, I think 78 or 75, uh, has kind of spilled out over the land. And this, this blood of those babies uh, is still crying out. And there needs to be repentance for that. And I think it is impossible for somebody who is a real believing, mature Christian mm -hmm. that he can vote for somebody that is pro-abortion. That's wrong. What can we say to those churches that supported this kind of idea? And then you can obviously see that it's wrong. Like they, they support abortion in, in the name of a uh, woman's right. And then uh, like uh, they, they use like freedom, inclusive. Yeah. To and also they are in the name of Jesus. They yeah. say Jesus is love. Yeah. So abortion, you know, kind of give a woman a hard time. So just love her and will allow her to do the abortion well, or something. The eyes of many of those pastors need to be opened to the truth of what the word says. They are only holding on to half of the Bible or part of the Bible and they don't look or don't read the other part that is very clear. <laughs> so you, you, you cannot just pick and choose. That's exactly the strategy of the devil. Yeah. In the temptation of Jesus, the devil quoted scripture to Jesus, but he only put part of the scripture. So a half a truth is not the truth. It is a lie if you don't put the whole package together. Mm -hmm. And so people are deceived and they don't even know it in many cases. In some cases they know it, but they choose to deny it mm -hmm. and not look there. Mm -hmm. They think they can put it under the rug and they are seeker friendly and they are afraid. Again, fear is a spirit that comes from the devil, mm -hmm. you know? And so they are afraid, oh, if I say this, then I lose maybe 10 people in my congregation because they leave, mm -hmm. you know? They get up and leave and then where's my salary going to come from? Mm -hmm. And so they are not looking out for the people. They're not looking out to God for, and for the truth. They're looking out for themselves where their paycheck comes from. And that is just wrong. So don't stop going to a church like that. Show the pastor, we are leaving you because you are not preaching the truth. We want to know, we want to be taught the truth. So you better get your act right, pastor, yeah. because if you're not teaching the truth, we are going to leave. So if that starts to make an example and pastors hear about that, maybe they sit down and study for three, four days before they give their, their next sermon on Sunday and find out what the truth is and then preach the truth yeah. without thinking, oh, I need to be seeker friendly. No, be truth friendly. You know, you need to honor God first. I think that is so important because uh, a lot of Christian, a lot of churches say that we don't want to talk about politics, but there's actually a lot of leftist pastor or churches that are in politics. For example, Al Sharpton and then uh, Warnock from uh, Georgia. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All the thing they, they talk about is basically anti-Bible, anti-human, anti-love, anti-everything, and anti-knowledge. But they are out there and just go like, they, they, they have no fear. They, they're not like going to be like, oh, I'm going to lose like uh, uh, white people from, the con from my congregation. They have no fear. Why do you think we have so much fear on the conservative side of the churches? The left is, is very often much more outspoken yeah. Yeah. Uh, about things. And yeah, the, the conservative side is uh, more afraid, seems, uh, to, to speak out the truth. But uh, 
again, we need to come back. I'm not the judge. We are not the judge of those people. But we need to discern. And we need to discern between right and wrong. If I look at the word of God and I look at what this pastor says, and if he says I'm pro-abortion or I'm, I'm for things that are against the word of God, I need to cut that off out of my life. Not go there, not listen to it, uh, and, and look for the place where there is truth. And surround myself with people that are that are kingdom-minded truth seekers, you know, and that love the Lord, love the Word of God, that are listening to the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and do the things that He tells them to do. You know, be obedient to the Word of God. When Holy Spirit speaks to you and tells you, do this, then follow that. But that is something that needs to be practiced because... The Holy Spirit is, is the, the voice of the Holy Spirit is very um, subtle. Mm -hmm. It's gentle. And if you are consuming too many superficial, superficial things, you're not going to hear him. You know? mm -hmm. So you need to also have quiet time to listen to the Lord. You need to spend the time in prayer with the Lord and listen, not just tell him all the things that you want. Thank you. We, we learned so much today. We just hope churches can pick up their courage, especially after the vision rally. We see so many pastors have the same courage, have the same understanding, have the same vision. Unity. Cal yeah. California is savable, and then we can fight this ba battle. I remember Raul said, courage is contagious, which yes. is from uh, Billy Graham's. What he said really touched me, and we really need to fight this battle. And we cannot fight it alone. We have to have unity, and we have to have unity based on the Bible, and we have to get all the churches and all the pastors together. We are very strong. California have the most conservative population, believe it or not. We need to get together, and we need to be strong together, and we need to help each other, and we need to have the unity. If I can leave one last advice for the viewers of this program, it yeah. would be study what it means to be born again, and then start listening, practicing to listen to the Holy Spirit and do what Holy Spirit tells you to do. If you do that, I think California will change. All right. Thank you very much. All right, thank you guys for watching, and then uh, thank you, Pastor. Oh, uh, uh, min <laughs> Minister. 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 Ah, sorry, Wolf sorry. Wolfgang. Wolf Minister Wolfgang. Where, where, where does that uh, first name come from? Like, is it like a from I'm, which? I'm country? from Austria. Austria. Yes. Like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Like Arnold. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you guys for watching, and then uh, we'll see you next time. <laughs>